Like most good things in life, flying comes with a cost. One that extends beyond imagination and impacts future generations. We estimate that aviation accounts for around 2 to 3% of global CO2 emissions, making it one of the hardest industries to decarbonize. And tackling this challenge requires collective actions. Airlines, logistics companies, handlers, airports, and all other stakeholders are joining forces to build a sustainable future. A key part of this transformation is the adoption of renewable energy sourced from natural elements such as sunlight, wind, water, and geothermal heat. To explore how airports around the world are embracing renewable energy and driving sustainability, we welcome you to the fourth episode of Future of Transport, Innovative and Sustainable, an air cargo series delivered to you by Edmonton International Airport, YG. At Edmonton International Airport, YEG, we can handle any size of operation, including oversized, heavyweight, and industrial cargo within the Port Alberta Foreign Trade Zone. Our IATA CEIV pharma community has expertise handling all multi-temperature controlled shipments, including pharmaceuticals, perishable products, advanced agricultural, and high value added products. Access Canada, the US, and Mexico through a multimodal transportation hub that includes major highways and proximity to two national rail lines. This makes YEG a key hub between Asian and North American markets. Sustainability drives every aspect of our cargo business and on airport ecosystems, making Edmonton International Airport your best choice for investment to move our industry forward to a net zero future. Visit flyeia.com slash cargo. Ever thought of a fuel whose only byproduct is drinkable water? Crazy, right? According to several scientists, hydrogen is the fuel of the future. But although hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe and is found in nearly all organisms, pure hydrogen is surprisingly rare on Earth. Instead, it primarily exists in combination with other elements most commonly with oxygen as water. To utilize hydrogen, it must first be extracted by splitting these molecular bonds. It can be obtained by various methods like electrolysis. We should also keep in mind that hydrogen could be potentially a sustainable fuel only when it is obtained by using renewable energy. Now, the question is, how can we use hydrogen energy? Hydrogen can be used as a fuel because it's a highly combustible gas and is very reactive and releases a very large amount of energy when it reacts with air. And this energy is really required to drive a lot of your engines that you would see in your trains, planes, and in your automobiles. So when hydrogen now reacts with anything like air, all it produces is water vapor and really no carbon-based emissions are produced when we now burn this hydrogen as a fuel. There are several uses of hydrogen and one of the prominent use is in fuel cells. While the major focus of fuel cell is in transportation, whatever a battery can power, a fuel cell can too. As a result, airports worldwide are exploring innovative ways to use hydrogen as a fuel. YG is leading the charge towards a clean energy future through its hydrogen hub, a cornerstone of the Airport City Sustainability Campus. Well, hydrogen is definitely a resource that is already happening. We have the expertise. It's already applicable. So we do think that for aviation, that's something that we should definitely consider. Um, and that will accelerate uh, the possibility for a sector to reach net zero by 2050. But how is YG using hydrogen as a fuel source? There's many different levels that we will explore on our journey. Uh, one being our mobile fleet, making the transfer from normal gasoline or diesel to hydrogen fuel fleet. We're also looking at our utility plant. Uh, a lot of our energy that we generate here on site comes from natural gas, and we're looking at blending hydrogen with that natural gas to lower the carbon intensity of that heat or power. 
Currently right now we're looking at the uh, road type vehicles, cars and trucks, but eventually we're looking at converting over our airside fleet, which would be snow plows, runway sweepers, that type of heavy industry vehicles. We have six cars currently right now and we're utilizing them. All our staff can utilize those cars at any given time to attend functions downtown to use across our campus. So they're there as a general use vehicle. And we also have one airside vehicle that's used for runway checks. That is a hydrogen vehicle. That's a four wheel drive SUV. So we're trying to embed them into our operation as best we can as we move forward. So currently right now at Evans Airport, we have one refueling station, which I'm standing in front of. We're looking to expand on that as our fleet grows and as our demand grows. The Start Amirai cars purchased by YG are the first hydrogen powered fleet in Alberta. The Mirai vehicles use hydrogen fuel cell technology making electricity from hydrogen and oxygen and leaving only water as a tailpipe emission. They have a range of around 647 km and can be refueled in 5 minutes. But how difficult is it to fuel these vehicles? It is actually, it's like filling up air in your tire or maybe more like propane. Uh, you have a nozzle, you put it on the end, you pack it in and then it fills it up. This, the fuel is measured in kilograms. So it's about five kilograms or so, it fills up the uh, tank in the car and you get about 650 kilometers to a tank of, of hydrogen. These vehicles and YG's partnership with Toyota aims to reduce carbon emissions, attract investments and kickstart the Edmonton Metro Region's 5,000 vehicle challenge which aims to have 5,000 hydrogen and hydrogen dual fuel vehicles on road in Alberta by 2028. But is hydrogen a safe fuel option? Hydrogen is extremely safe. And if you, if, if you don't take a look at it on, online, you can see all kinds of videos around it. The airport is also exploring hydrogen for sustainable aviation fuel, industrial conversions, and hydrogen powered shuttle buses for passengers. Moreover, YG has formed partnership with companies like Zero Avia to explore the use of hydrogen for decarbonizing ground operations and aircraft emissions. But to effectively use hydrogen, the airport must build an infrastructure to support it and create a hydrogen ecosystem. So what is a hydrogen ecosystem? An ecosystem is one that we're still developing in this world and that's something where my team that I'm leading is very focused and when we think about what the ideal version from a zero avia standpoint looks like you have co-located renewable assets which are generating green electrons you feed those to an electrolyzer on site and then you have a densification process which could either be compression or liquefaction to cryogenic temperatures we store that then airside and then we are developing key pieces of our product roadmap, which are the mobile storage and dispensing technologies. And we have one for gas, we have one for liquid. And for these two different technologies, they are the most capitally efficient way that we can take the product onto the air, airfield and we're able to actually dispense it to the aircraft with minimal losses and ensure that we get as close to 100% state of charge on board the aircraft, meaning you fly the furthest you can. Similar to YEG, several airports around the world are exploring hydrogen-powered ground support equipment to reduce carbon emissions and improve sustainability. For instance, in association with Temasek, Singapore's Changi Airport is set to deploy H3 Dynamics hydrogen-powered ground power units. Meanwhile, Kansai Airports in Japan has been integrating hydrogen energy since 2014 with hydrogen refueling facilities and fuel cell vehicles, including forklifts and buses, to reduce environmental impact. Similarly, Exeter Airport in the UK is testing hydrogen fuel GSE as a part of the Zero Carbon Ton project, aimed at reducing diesel consumption and CO2 emissions during aircraft turnarounds. Brussels Airport is also piloting a hydrogen refueling station and hydrogen-powered towing tractor to explore sustainable alternatives and reduce emissions in ground handling operations. Let's see how EasyJet is moving towards zero emission aviation with Project Acon by trialing hydrogen refueling at UK's Bristol Airport. This is our hydrogen baggage tractor. It looks very much like the equipment we use today, but what makes it special is that it has a hydrogen fuel cell powertrain 
This vehicle is going to be refueled and operated by DHL, who are ground handlers at Bristol Airport, and they will then use this tractor to take our customers' bags to and from aircraft operating at Bristol. These initiatives highlight a growing global effort to incorporate hydrogen as a sustainable fuel alternative for airport operations. Recent collaborations such as the Airbus Toronto Pearson International Airport Agreement aim to explore the feasibility of hydrogen infrastructure. Developing alternative propulsion infrastructure will require airports to form partnerships with green energy providers and integrate these technologies into future investment plans. As we discussed in episode one, hydrogen can also be a source of energy for aircraft with Airbus aiming to bring to market the world's first hydrogen-powered commercial aircraft by 2035. Are you still doubtful whether planes can actually fly with hydrogen? So these planes are actually flying already and hydrogen fuel, as you mentioned, from Airbus and both Boeing are working and racing towards it. And really that hydrogen fuel airplanes are gonna be in the 2000 nautical mile range and less to service it, which is phenomenal because 80% of flights from Edmonton are in that range. So, countries rich in natural resources could become strategic hubs for hydrogen-based aviation. In order to build some sustainable ecosystems, the first step for airports is to look at conducting feasibility studies on hydrogen aircraft operations, infrastructure, and refueling needs. But as hydrogen rises as a clean fuel source with water as the only byproduct, can it coexist with other fuel options like SAF? We do believe at the airport that these two technologies uh, should coexist. Uh, SAF is definitely a medium and long-term solution for long-haul uh, flights, while uh, hydrogen um, flights uh, are definitely you know, happening very soon, especially for regional and commuter flights. So we do believe that it's not one against the other, it's like uh, coexistence of these two solutions. While hydrogen and other fuel options like SAF are poised to play a complementary roles in decarbonizing aviation, the journey towards sustainable air travel doesn't stop there. Airports are also turning to renewable energy sources like solar power to further reduce their carbon footprint and embrace greener future. For example, Dubai International Airport has installed the largest solar energy system in the region at Terminal 2, which provides 29% of the terminal's electricity. Leonardo da Vinci Rome Fiusimo Airport has also installed a 60 megawatt solar power system to reduce its carbon footprint. The airport is installing 500 EV charging stations and a 10 megawatt per hour storage system. At Edmonton International Airport, planning Design is underway to build one of the world's largest solar farms at an airport. The solar farm will supply renewable energy for airport operations as well as contribute to powering the greater Edmonton metro region. Meanwhile, airports in India are also setting a global example by increasingly embracing renewable energy. In 2015, Cochin International Airport became the world's first airport to run entirely on solar power. The solar plant is spread across 45 acres with 46,150 solar panels and generates around 50,000 to 60,000 units of electricity daily, making the airport absolutely power neutral. In fact, solar is just one side of the story. The aviation sector is experimenting with hybrid models like combining solar and wind energy or solar and hydro energy. For instance, Mumbai Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport introduced a unique hybrid system, a vertical axis wind turbine and solar mill. This technology harnesses both wind and solar power while significantly cutting CO2 emissions. Meanwhile, Delhi's Indira Gandhi International Airport runs entirely on hydro and solar power. With a 7.84 megawatt airside solar plant and energy sourced from Himachal Pradesh hydropower facilities, the airport eliminates 200,000 tons of CO2 emissions annually. 
by integrating solar, wind, and hydro energy, Indian airports are moving closer to their net zero emission goals. Apart from solar, wind, and hydropower, airports are turning to geothermal energy to reduce their carbon footprints and improve sustainability. But before we explore how airports are using that energy, let's first understand what geothermal energy is. You may have relaxed in a natural hot springs pool or seen the old faithful geyser blasting hot water into the air in Yellowstone National Park. But have you ever thought of where all that heat comes from? Well, it comes from deep beneath the surface of the earth. It's called geothermal energy and we can use it to generate clean, renewable electricity. Geothermal energy is available 24-7, 365 days. And unlike solar and wind energy, it is not dependent on any factors like the sun or the speed of the wind. But how can we generate geothermal energy? Geothermal plants use heat from the underground for the generation of power and heat. Natural fluid is extracted from the underground at high temperatures, creating vapor that is then used to produce electrical energy by means of turbines or directly for heating. The fluid is converted into water and returned to the underground, achieving thus a closed loop that releases no emissions into the atmosphere. While airports like Copenhagen, Paris only, Amsterdam Schiphol and Vancouver International are already using geothermal systems to cut emissions and energy costs, Dublin Airport is exploring this renewable resource to help heat and cool its facilities. The European airport is looking to use ground source heat pumps, a system that taps into this heat to warm and cool buildings efficiently. In the US, Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport or SDF is implementing the largest geothermal system of its kind with 648 wells that will reduce carbon emissions by 80% and save the airport $400,000 annually. SDF's next program supported by construction and engineering company CMTA and featuring projects like a geothermal heating, ventilation and air conditioning system aims to improve energy efficiency and alternative fuel use, targeting a 45% energy reduction. The benefits of geothermal are immense. It's a large reduction of equipment. There are no need for cooling towers, chillers, or carbon emitting boilers. It's much less, less expensive to maintain and it lacks moving parts, so it's less susceptible to um, a single point of failure. From Dublin to Louisville, airports are tapping into geothermal energy to create a cleaner, more sustainable future for air travel. While the industry is exploring sustainable flying options, it is also considering battery-powered planes, eco-friendly technologies, supply chain optimization tactics. Along with modernizing fleets, airlines are implementing new age technologies to optimize routes, which can eventually help boost their sustainability efforts. But wait, that's a story for another day. So stay tuned with us and keep watching the series Future of Transport, Innovative and Sustainable and Air Cargo series delivered to you by Edmonton International Airport, one of Canada's busiest airports.